On today's episode, we're going to talk about birth. Again. Again. The birth of a universe, the rebirth of a universe. DC is going to relaunch their stuff again. I'm teen sometime. Yeah. But it's not Marvel, it's DC. It's, this time it's DC. Um, what they're going to plan on doing is, is uh, uh, renumbering all their stuff back to number one, except action comics and detective comics, because those are the original ones that have been around, and that's what their whole universe is built on. Um, Plus, they'll make a first. Think about it. They'll be the first to hit the number thousand mark. Yeah. And that's going to be huge and, news and, and we'll, huge sales. We'll see what numbering system and how they're going to calculate it, how it well, goes. From the um, article I read, it's supposed to take everything up that if they had so many issues in between, it's going to be counted up and it's going to pick up right where it left That's off where at. they should do it. So I don't they know should. what number that'll be. That's, but that's the information it should I saw. Be pretty I think it's supposed to be 934, I think. 800s, sure, 900s. 943 yeah. or something like but, that. But again, another marketing thing, not really caring about legacy. It's all about saying, well, you know what? When Superman hits 1,000, it'll be the first one to do it. The news will cover it. They will make probably 1,000 of issue different covers to make money from it, not really caring about legacy. It's all about the money, and that's why they're redoing the numbers, just so they can have Well, I think them going back to the original numbering is a little bit of uh, acknowledgement of the legacy and how long those books have been around and things like that. But if they so, care, why didn't as they long do that as, long ago? Well, as long as they start now with this numbering and continue it, for at least a few years. Come on now. A couple yeah. decades, yeah. please. Once they hit 1,000, you know. then they're going to stop and go, we're going to go well, number one so we can sell well, multiple we don't issues that, again. Probably. We'll yeah, see. Will. But, yeah, but, give uh, them time. Well, with this whole... Not, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I insist. <laughs> well, it's not just about the, the renumbering. They're going to you know, relaunch a lot of things, start a new movement. Um, they're talking about going back to kind of what they did before, what they've been successful at. Um, character development. With their characters and, and stuff. Back to the basics. That way they can keep the, the comic fan base that has been there for a long time. Plus, you know... Well, they have to because they're losing in the comic book market. They are losing to Marvel fiercely. And they, they have forgotten their roots. They are going back to the two ninety nine dollars price point, which is that's, important. That's a great thing. Because at one point the annuals from DC were at eight ninety nine dollars yeah. last summer. That's disgusting. Yeah. What people can really, little kids can go out and afford that unless their parents are paying for it. And their parents are going to sit there and say, you know, in this economic times, you're not getting a $9 comic book. We could yeah. be buying other things. And when they did say about putting it down at the two ninety nine to hold the price down, that's all nice. But a lot of these titles that are coming off are going to be shipped twice a month. So you're not really saving any kind of money. You're actually spending more. But you're getting more for your money because a, a, four, a four ninety nine book or three ninety nine book was still twenty pages. A two ninety nine book at twenty pages, six ninety nine. You're getting forty pages or six dollars. I guess two nine six dollars. You're still getting more bang for your buck. And the bottom line is, you don't have to read that title if you want. You don't to have to read all the yeah. titles. So right. you're gonna have to pick the titles yeah, you want within budget. If they go back budget, to more yeah. standard way of telling stories, where not quite everything is quite so intertwined, that'd be right. great. But, but then the, the two ninety nine really works. Right. But the thing is, they're, and they're not just doing this, of course, because they want to, you know, relaunch for the sake of relaunching. There's still a lot of confusion going on in the DC universe. Lots of confusion. Continuity isn't there. I mean, they have to de-age characters so that they can keep the legacy alive. But then you have Batman and uh, Dick Grayson, who they look exactly the same age. I mean, if you guys are reading the Grayson title now, you know, he's got to be in his 25s or 30s, and that's where Batman's technically at. So they have to do something with this. All these different Batman, the Batman family, all the different characters, you know, they have to do something. So this is a way to put back into uh, the DC universe some continuity, and they need that desperately. Because even after they relaunched the 52, where was Wally West? And the new, new 52. Right? And the new, new 52, Wally West changed again. Right. Exactly. To match the two. I was talking to a comic book sales guy the other day. And I guess, I don't know from a fan standpoint, I know certain people like certain things. I like some of the stuff they did in the new 52. But I also have to agree with them that they're catering towards all the television shows and the movies. And if the movies aren't... A, are, aren't a success or the TV show bombs or something long after those TV shows and movies are gone 
those books are going to be around. Those books Can made the, the TV show. That had the fans there for your TV shows. So you shouldn't deviate too much from there. And it goes back to what we were talking about, continuity. They need to have continuity. Put a good storyline together. You don't always have to do these big blockbusters crossover stuff. But get back to what made you successful, both Marvel and DC. You nailed it. The one big thing is the crossovers. Have to buy eight titles to get one story? Not everybody has that kind of money. Right. Back in the day when they were doing them, they were a dollar a pop. Right. You know, you could afford that, but now you but, can't. And that, but the thing was, there's just so many cross. I'm, I'm yeah, just talking DC. Just, everything's we're a giant event. talking everything. Instead of exactly. being a summer long event that lasts about two, maybe three months, it now lasts six months. You know, it starts yep. in the summer and it's not over till Christmas. And you're lucky you if know. they can get them out on time. But and, well, Secret yeah. Wars. And look but at the, look at the, the Robin time, War that know. they just came out with. If you yeah. want to know what's going on with the quarter vowels and the old little Robins and what's going to happen, you have to buy that separate or title on top of everything else. It starts out as a crossover and then continues after that. It's not done. Right. It's <clears> definitely <throat> not done. It's not a standalone. Yeah. It's definitely not a standalone. So. Well, hopefully this will give them a good chance to, to clean up a little bit of that and... Uh, hopefully keep some kind of separation between what they're doing on screen and off screen. Agreed. Um, you know, I'd like to, they don't have to go in sync with each other. I mean, right. what they're doing in the comics can be completely different than what they're doing. Yeah. Now you guys, because there's, there's people that will never pick up a comic, yeah. but we'll, no. we'll go see every superhero movie or watch them on TV. And the same is same. I would actually, people that won't watch anything on the screen. They just want to read it. So. I would actually like to see them just go back to their core separate titles. If you want to try something new, put out a four part mini series or six part mini series. And if you get a great fan response out of it, and, and you decide to go with the issue, then let that creative team roll with it. But, but that, if it doesn't bomb, then you didn't mess up uh, uh, somebody else's title then. You know, another thing, the creative teams, they've been leaving D.C. You know, at one point, George Perez is on Superman. He's no longer there. You have Gail Simone. She was on Firestorm. She's no longer there. You have these great writers, and they just bring in people you never heard of, and they're throwing stuff at the wall to see if it sticks. And you guys know this because you work there. You see this stuff. They're throwing static out there. Is anybody buying it? Okay, then they stop. So you have invested maybe a year's worth of your money and time, and then they say, it's not selling that well. Don't put crap and out. And Marvel's doing the same. And Oh, they're definitely well, yeah. doing the same, and yeah. it's terrible. But you know what? Yeah. That's why I don't buy that many issues and I won't buy an issue until I see some longevity out of it because I'm tired of buying 12 issues and then finding out it stopped like the the Red Lanterns that stopped already right it's, I believe yeah. yeah okay I was into that from day one I loved it now it's gone yeah. boom all right the Red Lanterns are still around they're just not right there. but that issue was you know that, yeah. that it got deep into the their psyche and told you a lot of what each lantern was about now it's gone it's continuity keeping a creative team it's keeping legacy and keeping the price point. Now, we've talked about price point here a lot. They finally heard us, if they, one of the nine were them. <laughs> um, but that's what we need. The nine. <laughs> as, as, as part of uh, the fan base who buys it the most and are collectors of it, not just a casual fan, oh, I like Green Lantern, I'm going in for Green Lantern only, they need to listen to us because we're the ones that buy the multiple, I, say, I mean multiple titles, not multiple issues, but multiple titles. And they're finally listening to us now because they're hurt in the market. They Marvel's been dominating, what, the top ten spots for the last, what, six, seven months? At least, yeah. You know, definitely since Secret Wars came out. Yeah. So that's the good thing. They're finally listening, but we have another relaunch. So now what's going to happen a couple years down the road after they hit those great numbers for marketing purposes, are they going to retool it again and rebirth it again? And we Who get knows? it. 75 years of Batman stories, you've got to change up some stuff. But do you have to do stuff where, let's just talk in, you know, Green Lantern. You know, uh, Jeff Johns came in to do the rebirth of that. Well, he had to bring back Sinestro, had to bring back Kilowog, had to bring back, you know, how? Stop getting rid of the characters. Retire them or something instead of killing them so a whole new Let's story. Go on has a vacation to or something. <laughs> right. Because when they brought in Kyle, they were after a younger audience because the people that were reading during Hal's time were stopping. So they brought in Kyle. Yeah. I know a person who only reads Kyle's stuff. She doesn't like Hal Jordan. And if, and if you're going to try and do something off of a TV show, keep that its own separate line. You do not have to bring the TV show stuff into the DC Just because something's DC successful universe. in one media doesn't yep. mean it has to be in both. Stop exactly. changing our history and so. our culture. Exactly. So do we do we nail this one? I believe so. But I'm looking forward. I think it's going to oh. be a good relaunch. I think the numbering system is going to get cleaned up pretty good. So I, I wish them well hopeful. with it. I, I 
I hope, you know, from what they told us about what they want to do, I hope they can meet their objectives and it's going to be a good, successful run for them so, and very long. So I wish good, you all the yeah. best. Bring in new creators or, or keep the good creators there. Don't let them go. That's that's part of the deal because, right, believe me, before we kill this, writers and the artists are what keep us coming back. Do regardless they? of where you stand on a writer versus an artist like we've talked about. It takes but, two, yeah. Right. So yeah. if you don't pay them and make them stay... You know, you're not going to sell big issue numbers. And if you get, let's just say, the, re- I'm just going to say the writers to be objectifying here. You have a good writer. They put out good product. In time, people will hear about it. Just like when Jeff Johns first went on the JSA, a crap title, but he made it work. And after a while, buzz started going around. And, and now we get a JSA coming. movie or a JLA movie. Right. And now we're going to get, and JSA is coming back yep. in the relaunch. And so, I, I think Jeff Johns, they said, if I'm not mistaken, I could be, but I don't, I'm pretty sure it's Jeff Johns. It's going to be the, on, was it May 25th, the 80 page Giant Spectacular, yes. the rebirth? Yes. It's going to be written it's going to by start with that. Yeah. one yes. of our favorite writers, Jeff Johns. So I'm looking forward it's to that. It's going to be awesome. It should be good. should yeah. be fun. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for DC this summer. Same so here. Go out and get some stuff. And remind, remember, if you're tired of the same old story, Turn some comic book pages, and please leave some feedback in the box below. Like us on Facebook. <laughs> and like us on Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> like us on our YouTube Thank channel. YouTube channel. Because we're not on Instagram. I'm sorry. I screw- to Subscribe to YouTube, right, please. Let, let's do that. Take that closing. No, leave it and cut this part off. <laughs>